Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast. I'm happy to have you here again. Okay, so today's topic I think is more relevant to people who are within the scope of their first 10 years of training. I gather that some more advanced and experienced practitioners would benefit as well, but I'm just saying. All right, I'm going to discuss and talk with you about this thing called bow stance. Okay, bow stance is something that's very common in traditional martial arts, but you see it in almost all martial arts. I even saw boxers use it, uh, notably uh, Mike Tyson. Uh, I've seen him in several fights using this. Uh, It's very common, it's just a natural way for humans to stand. Now, bow stance is actually translated differently in Chinese. The Chinese, and in Chinese martial arts, refer to it as Gong Bu. Gong as bow, a bow, sorry. Uh, Mind you, I'm not a native speaker of the English language. And bo means step. Bow step, uh, you can interpret it two different ways. Some people, and that's the easiest way to explain to beginners, think of it as, okay, it's the sort of step or stance that you take when uh, you would like to shoot bow and arrow. But actually, a lot of the steps and stances used in traditional martial arts can be used to shoot bow and arrow. So, uh, that's not quite it. The real reason uh, this is called bow step is that you make your entire body with it into a bow and arrow, which I will explain momentarily. I just would like to comment on the fact that it's called a bow step rather than a bow stance, because most stances in traditional Chinese martial arts are called bu, steps. A stance is something fixed. A step is something in the process of becoming something else, right? A step you only take for a second or two seconds or a fraction of a second, and then it changes. And the idea is you call it a step because you're supposed to get into it and then change to another step. You're not supposed to just stand there. So the language treats it differently. Now that's a very important distinction. Much like, um, and I'm, I'm going to sidetrack for just a moment here, but it's very important. Often in Okinawan Karate, in, when we speak of this martial art in English, we speak of Soto Uke or Uchi Uke. And... Often these are translated into English as inside block or an outside block. Well, first of all, these movements are not necessarily blocking anything. They can be used for a multitude of uh, applications in different situations. But moreover, that the word uke in Japanese does not mean to block. It means to receive. Now, that's a very diff- different physical connotation, right? Um, when I tell someone to block something, they're putting up a barrier. But if you tell someone that they have to accept something, now that's an entirely different paradigm and your muscles, connective tissues, bones, your entire body and consciousness react differently to these words. Block versus receive. They're just taken in differently, right? Same in Japanese, Chinese, and of course in English as well. So using the correct language is important. And again, in traditional Chinese martial arts, bow stance is actually bow step. So before I get to the intricacies of what this type of step is really meant for, let's just make sure we're all on the same page. eh? So bow step, you'd stand with your feet parallel. One foot would be pointing sideways, roughly 45 degrees. The other foot's going to go forward. And then people typically put about 60 to 70% of the weight on the lead foot, on the front foot, 60 to 70% of the weight. And then on the rear foot, they have either anywhere between 30 to 40% of the weight. That is bow step in most martial arts. I see some people placing their rear foot at an angle of, say, 90 degrees. Uh, I would consider that sort of incorrect or less efficient. First of all, it puts strain on the rear knee. Second of all, it makes one less mobile. 
it kind of roots you in place. And again, we said there is the concept and the idea of a step. We would like to be mobile and not staked into the ground, you know? So this, this is why in my teachings and my traditions, the rear foot is at an angle of 45 degrees. Now, what is with this concept of calling this a bow step? With a bow, we have the idea of tension. Tension is very important. Tension and release thereof. How do we make our bodies into bow and arrow? The bow is the entire body. The arrow would be either the foot or the hand, the arm, that we can release as a strike or as the consecutive movement. Here's what I mean by that. Whenever you go into bow step, you are attempting to use that step as creating a tension as when you pull the string on a bow. However, this does not occur by the mere fact that you went into the formation of that step. There are certain things that need to happen so to create that tension. Here I'm not talking about muscular tension. The tension is that you create mostly <clears throat> with your connective tissues. And the idea is as follows. When I go into bow step, I need, first of all, as much as possible to have a lot of the surface of my feet touching the ground. If I go into a bow step and the rear foot is slightly elevated at the heel or at one of the sides, or maybe the front foot is elevated at, at the front or, or the back of the foot, then I am actually leaking tension for those surfaces at the bottom of the feet which are not touching the ground. That's one way to leak and lose tension. Now another way and the most common way that this happens and which is why people don't actually manifest the great <coughs> benefits that this kind of step can generate is that their buttocks protrude outwards. Okay. Now, th this is referred to in, in anatomy as anterior pelvic tilt and posterior pelvic tilt, but I won't get into that here, okay? It doesn't matter. It's very simple. You have to straighten your back, elongate your spine, and tuck in your buttocks as you go into that step. Straighten your back, should be almost as flat as a table, elongate your spine at both, the, both its ends, and tuck in your buttocks and do so gently without overly squeezing the gluteus maximus, the, the large uh, muscles covering uh, your, your buttocks. So when you do that, you create a tension. The tension is held by the pelvic muscles and especially the muscular pair called the iliopsoas. When you create the tension by, again, straightening the back, elongating the spine, tucking in the buttocks, making sure as much of the surface of each feet touches the ground and not slouching over and having the step low enough and not too high, you begin to hold a lot of tension in your pelvis area. Now you have the capacity to release the tension. That tension can be released into a kick. It can be released into a punch or another type of strike. It can also release into another successive step, which can be another gongbu or bow step, or it could be another step. It doesn't matter, but you are basically gathering up this tension for a movement to follow which would be quick, explosive, and powerful. The idea here is to create this type of tension that you can store in your body and then release without overtaxing your muscles to gather up that sort of tension. If you had listened to previous lectures of mine, you would know that when we tense our muscles too hard, then we actually become weaker 
in our strikes and in our potential to execute all manner of techniques. So we don't want to overuse our muscles. Rather, we want to gather up the tension in our connective tissues. Now, this is again done by making sure that first of all, the bow step is not too high. Sometimes being too low is not good either, but it shouldn't be too high. Second of all is the idea of dropping into the step. If you don't try, if you're not trying to push yourself towards the ground, but rather you let the body drop, then the connective tissues of the body can pick up the tension and use it more appropriately. Now, a lot of people think about bow step as a two-legged posture. But I challenge you to think about it differently. What if the bow step is actually about one leg gathering the tension and the other leg bearing less weight and being ready to be released or using or to be used as a pivot to release the tension? So try to wait when you go into bow step try to think about the front leg as a one-legged posture almost as if the rear leg was hung in the air even though it's touching the ground even though it might carry as much as 40 or 30 percent of the weight also try to step into into that posture and try to put as much weight as possible just as a form of experimentation on that front leg and try to see what happens to the rear leg which becomes lighter and readier to accept changes this is a very interesting experiment to go through and what you'd realize is the transitory quality that this type of step has here's what i mean by that say that you are now grappling with another person all right and both of you have the feet maybe shoulder width apart maybe slightly more now imagine that you throw one of your legs backwards and by so doing go into a bow step what is the purpose of going into the bow step in that sort of situation? Well, first of all, that counters like our, our initial our initial um, conception of that sort of step. We usually think of it as going forward, but actually we can shoot one leg to the back and use it to go to the rear. Now that's one thing. And second of all, what what becomes the purpose of that step? when you again when say you are grabbing the opponent with two arms he's grabbing you with two arms all right and now you what you shot one leg backward and you went into the bow step and now the actual the rear leg is going to be used as a pivot yeah potentially so yeah right we could shoot the the rear the, the rear leg backwards and then uh, bring it forward as a kick but we could also shoot it backwards and then from there, grab the opponent, transition ourselves sideways into Mabu. Mabu, the horse step, and pull the opponent sideways and downward, right? That's one option. We could shoot the leg backward, go into bow step, transition the weight onto the back leg as we are grabbing the opponent with both our hands, and then put all the weight on that rear foot and kick him with the front foot, which is being released, right? So that's also an option. So actually, although people tend to think about the bow step as a bow stance, as something fixed and causing us to be staked in place, becoming immovable, actually, like I said, it could be transitory. It could be used for other means, for other methods. But again, if you ask me, the biggest idea here with the bow step is being able to generate tremendous internal tension and then release it. You're supposed to get to a point in your training and your ability 
that merely casually stepping into this bow step posture would enable you to gather enough internal momentum to release a powerful kick or a punch or a strike from a very short range by the mere fact that you're holding this enormous tension around your uh, pelvic region and then being able to drive that tension to be released uh, with whichever technique you might choose or the circumstances call for. For this, you need to be training for many years. This is not something that can be achieved within one or two years of training. I would say you can sort of get decent at it maybe after five years of training and pretty good at it after 10 years of training. And trust me, I've been in the martial arts for 16 years and I'm still improving. <laughs> so uh, the, the reason for this is that the creation of this internal tension that I'm talking about requires a lot of um, flexibility within the body. It requires a change of the body's tissues. Um, like I said in, in previous lectures, it takes the bones and connective tissues a long time to change. Uh, for connective tissues to completely remodel themselves in a significant way can take the upwards of three years. For bones, the upwards of seven years. And like I said, I've been training in martial arts for 16 years. How many cycles like that have I gone through? How many cycles have you gone through? If you are indeed training correctly for the great, that greater period of time. So you have to consider that some skills in the martial arts do take longer than we would like to admit. And that's just how things are. With every passing month and every passing year, my connective tissues, my bones and my muscles also reshape and remodel themselves with according to the training that I go through. And they get better and better at doing what they're supposed to do over time. But it's a slow process. Now, that, that does not mean that someone cannot get to, to be good at using bow step for self-defense or fighting within a, a much shorter period of time. I mean, that, that is feasible within maybe a few months or a year or two, depending on the individual. However, to be able to use that step to gather that internal momentum, to create that tension without being overly tense with one's muscles and then being able to release it from a very short range. Well, that requires prolonged training, unfortunately. Now, I wish that I could have taught you such skills via recorded lecture. Unfortunately, one would require hands-on instruction from a qualified teacher to get those sorts of skills. That's just the nature of things. However, I can give you a different type of tip and a method and an exercise that you could work with that, in my opinion, would help you tremendously, both with the, the bow step uh, and with other types of stepping methods in the martial arts. So what I'm talking about, uh, I personally call Zeran Bufa. Zeran Bufa is translated into English as natural stepping method. And it is an exercise that I make all of my beginner students go through uh, throughout their first maybe two or three years of training. I think it's very, very useful, but it is seldom utilized by martial arts teachers uh, with the exception of boxing coaches, surprisingly so. And in boxing, there tends to be not that many stepping methods as there are in traditional oriental martial arts. So the problem we have often is that in a given oriental martial art, there could be anywhere between uh, say 8 and 30 stepping methods, if not even more. And that's all very confusing, right? Because the more options you have, uh, the, the more you have to uh, quote-unquote choose from when you are fighting. And this conscious, conscious choice uh, between many options, especially under pressure, is quite perplexing to human beings. We can't actually choose in combat. It has to be ingrained into us. It has to become second nature so we could use it. So how do we make those stepping methods second nature? And how can we learn more about bow step and how to mix it with other steps? This is where Zeran Bufa comes into play. And it's a very, very easy type of exercise to comprehend, though it can be difficult to practice. 
goes like this. You decide on a step you want to practice. Say, Gong Bo. Bo step. And you start walking that step. First, you just walk forward. Bo step, bo step, bo step. Then you go forward and backward. Then you go sideways. And you try to go into that step in all sorts of angles. After you've done that for maybe one or two or three minutes, you decide to add another step. Say, Ma Bo. A horse step. Okay. So you start you begin to transition between these two types of steps. You do one marble, going to another marble, going to gongbu, going to another marble, and uh, so forth. And you attempt to randomly transition between the steps. Sometimes there would be three of these, one of that, two of these, two of that. Uh, you should change and intermix the, the patterns, the rhythms, the angles, everything. After you've done this for another two or three minutes with an additional step, you had another one, another one, another one, until you could cover a myriad of stepping methods. If you're a beginner, don't try to do this with more than three or four stepping methods. If, you're, if you've been training your martial art for, I don't know, like more than a few months or a year, you can try it with maybe seven steps, 10 steps, 15 steps. Again, depends on the individual and your own capacity. If you are already an advanced practitioner, you can do it with all of the arts stepping methods at the same time. And the idea is to train your body and your mind to transition seamlessly, seamlessly, effortlessly, and without too much conscious thought between the different stepping methods. And what he teaches also is the relationship between different types of steps and the manner in which you could transition between them and what it could be used for in fighting. Now, when you practice Ziran Bufa, natural stepping method, it's key that you don't do anything with your hands. Let your hands hang at the side of your body, or you might hold them up as you would in, in your style or with your preference in fighting, but don't do anything with them. The focus is on the stepping, not on the, not on the arms. Just let the arms go. Put all of your focus on your on your pelvis and down and over time just practicing this sort of stuff for a few months would completely transform one's practice of the martial arts irrespective of the martial art we're talking about this is just an excellent method and it can teach you a lot about bow step and many other steps so this is all for today uh if i were right here in the room with you I could teach you a whole lot more about this step and others, but unfortunately, this is a recorded lecture. Uh, you're welcome to learn more uh, about such methods and other things in my books, uh, which are found on Amazon. Uh, you can go on your favorite Amazon website, type in the search Jonathan Blustein, you'd find a list of my books. You can also type Research of Martial Arts. Research of Martial Arts is my international bestseller, uh, beloved by many martial artists worldwide or The Martial Arts Teacher, that's another book of mine that many people enjoy. And hey, if you like those lectures, then please tap that subscribe button, hey? Eh? Because we got lots more great content and many lovely interviews coming on this channel very soon. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll catch up with you next time.